We've spent a good amount of time over the last couple of years talking about the weaponization of the administrative branch of the federal government and not just the weaponization of them, but really the militarization of them because it's not as if their criminal investigators are just arming themselves with a sidearm uh, in case of emergency or that sort of thing. The administrative branches of the federal government have brought on criminal investigators, police essentially, in almost all aspects to investigate crime within their realm. Now, I've argued that that's what the Department of Justice and the FBI is for. So if the Railroad Commission has some sort of crime that needs to be investigated, it should be at the hands of the DOJ or the FBI, not the Railroad Commission. We should not be militarizing the Railroad Commission. But the one I want to talk about today is the one that I think really bothers most of us, and that's the IRS, the militarization of the IRS. Because, again, what you have is you have criminal investigators within the IRS investigating fraud, tax fraud, things like that. Again, I would argue that if there is some sort of tax fraud taking place, that's where you get the Department of Justice and the FBI involved. But... The IRS is not doing that. So let's take a look at what it is they feel they need to conduct tax investigations uh, and really and talk about how often it's being used as well. So ultimately what we have right now within the IRS, you have over 4,250 guns, uh, 3,200 handguns, 641 rifles, 408 shotguns, and six million rounds of ammo, and a and a good chunk of those firearms are P90 submachine guns. Now, if you were to look at what the IRS says they need these for and what they won't use them for, ultimately what they're saying is that they need it for uh, investigating tax crimes, and oftentimes those criminal investigators fear for their safety, so they want to carry a, a gun. I get it. But if you're going in and getting shotguns and rifles, you're, you're going in. Like you're, you know, they say they're not kicking in doors. They're not using flash grenades. They're not repelling from helicopters. None of that stuff, but they are the next level down from that, which means, you know, the, oh, and also let's add body armor and two armored vehicles to the equation as well. Ultimately, what you have is you do have people kicking in doors. You do have people, uh, coming in on people. American citizens heavily armed um, and coming in hot and heavy big time. Now, I also want to kind of make a note at this point that if you look at the time, at the amount of times that the IRS has actually fired weapons, it's unfortunate and fortunate that the IRS has had more accidental misfires than purposeful fires, meaning they've squeezed the, trigger, squeezed the trigger and blasted off around more times on accident than they have on purpose, meaning this isn't really happening a lot as far as them. I don't want to say they haven't used the weapons, but they haven't fired the weapons. Oftentimes when you come in with shotguns and rifles and P90 submachine guns and Glocks pulled, there's no need to fire a gun because you got the situation under control pretty quick but you're more likely to get accidentally shot by the IRS right now than you are on purpose. So kind of take that into consideration. But I'm going to argue that if a tax agent, a criminal investigator of the IRS is investigating something, he really just needs a sidearm or she just really needs a sidearm because you're going and doing an investigation. If you're kicking in doors, it is time to call in the Department of Justice and the FBI and completely demilitarize these administrative branches of the federal government. Leave the policing up to the police. Uh, there's plenty of federal agents to do that sort of thing. You know, when you look at the ATF, the F FBI, the Department of Justice, Homeland Security, I think you got plenty already. Uh, this is just, I think, another example of what it. I believe it is really for. And I believe what it is really for is confiscation of property. 
because the IRS is definitely in the business of confiscating property, and this is how they do it. They do it by force. Now, I don't want to get too into the caseload of the confiscation of property because I've made a few videos on that, but ultimately, roughly 75% of of cases that have gone to court that had to do with tax fraud where property was confiscated, it turned out that it was illegally confiscated by the IRS and those cases are overturned. But at that point, to defend yourself against the IRS, you're gonna, you know, you're you're taking out second mortgages, third mortgages, you're maybe going into bankruptcy just to defend yourself. So they are banking on the idea that they can confiscate anybody's property they want using militarization and, and using force. Um, and if you don't think they want to use force, when if you look at the ads when they were hiring, it said must be willing to use deadly force. Uh, this is what they're looking to do. And I, you know, again, if they were confiscating property and then those cases, they were winning those cases, I wouldn't be arguing this, but they're losing all of them. So they're banking on this idea that we can confiscate property to force people into submission. And there's really nothing they could do about it unless they happen to have, you know, $500,000 to defend themselves, uh, if not more. Uh, this is what it is all about. This is why the IRS has P90 submachine guns. This is why they have 6 million rounds of ammo, armored vehicles, body armor, shotguns, handguns military rifles, and we can go on and on and on when really they need calculators and computers and spreadsheets is what they really need. Leave the policing to the police. Um, unless you have alternative motives, which I believe that's kind of what it all comes down to is confiscation of property. So there you go. Uh, love to know your thoughts on this. Definitely put that below. Um, I'd also be curious if you have insight, put that below as well. Uh, but I do want to take a moment and say most people watch the channel, hey, they're not subscribers. Click that subscribe button. It's free and it greatly increases our ability to get these messages out through their algorithm. So click that subscribe button. But the most important part of this channel, we take prayer requests. So please don't ever, ever hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns. Thank you.